time of the day out here. It's awesome. I love it. heading towards the western side of the Kennedy Range, but in order to get there we must cross the Gascoigne River. This crossing is 200 meters wide and you better make sure that it is crossable before you get there otherwise you're going to be wasting your time. Two weeks prior to this trip it was uncrossable so hopefully it's crossable for us this time. Here we are at the Gascoigne River. I'm all dressed, ready to hop in. I'm wearing this so I don't blind you all, so you don't have to wear welding masks while you're watching the video. Wayne's gone over there to um, inspect the river to see if there's a shallower spot to cross because he's crossed here before, but he says he remembers another spot other than this. I'm not sure how this is gonna be, so it's gonna have to walk it. And no one else volunteered, so here I go. Walking a river crossing this size is definitely recommended. What I'm doing right now is checking how boggy it is and I'm looking for any signs of big rocks I've got to avoid or any logs that might damage the vehicle or get us stuck. Also note our vehicles are all switched off so they can all cool down. In case you're wondering there are no crocs in this water, the nearest crocodile to me right now will be at least 1000 k's north. So the conclusion is, it's not too bad, it's pretty deep, 
Um, hopefully not too boggy, this is the first section I'm worried about. So I'm going to have Wayne waiting. I've got a snatch strap on the back, ready to go. Um, I hope I haven't jinxed myself by wearing my <laughs> surfing clothes and inside the, the cab. I'm going to have the aircon on, full blast, and the windows up to create maximum pressure. And I'm still going to wear a seatbelt. The reason why I'm going to wear a seatbelt is so I don't just abandon vehicle. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to have front and rear locker on as well, because I haven't. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do anything. I just want to have everything to go, because I'm the first one to go in. Everyone else will probably be either very relieved when they see me on the other side, or very nervous if I get stuck. I made it across in one hit and I'm pretty happy no water came in. I firmly believe that the air conditioning on full blast, doors uh, doors closed, windows up, helps a lot. It's now Torben's turn to go. Everyone's a little bit nervous because um, it didn't look easy. Torben found a line that was slightly shallower, so he's going to give that a go instead. Just as Torben took the foot off the accelerator, he just hit a big rock which stopped him. And it's definitely not the best place to store a vehicle. Well, that didn't go to plan. We're not entirely sure of what actually happened to make the vehicle stop like that but we suspect it was something to do with the automatic gearbox. Regardless of how it happened, we need to get that Navara and that trailer out of the river quick smart. It took quite a few snatching attempts to get that Navara out with having the trailer as well. But it's out now and we're going to drain it. We then had a good look for another crossing and we found one not too far away. Don't know how we missed it before. Anyway, this one has a much more solid base, but it is deeper in a few sections. Given that there are quite a few boulders and hidden rocks in this crossing, Lewis opted to follow Wayne's line straight across.
Well, we're all across now, and I'm dry again. Um, so, the Navarro had a bit of a clearance issue, and probably went in just offline as to where we would have liked them to hop in. Uh, as you saw, we, we got them out, and we opted to get them across on the other side. So he followed Wayne across just to um, make sure there was no big boulders, and then he could follow the line through. That's a good way of doing it sometimes. Plus, when you don't make a river crossing like that, it can really shatter your confidence. It doesn't matter how confident you are to start with, it can shatter your confidence. And just a bit of encouragement, you know, and then you're all good to go again. So right now, as you can see, the shadows are getting a bit longer. So it's about time we head towards our camp. Get settled in for a night. colors and often off in the distance there that is the Kennedy range which we're heading towards on the way to camp we passed this open pit mine and it had this really cool looking rock which is called mukarite Oh wow, look at that one. Mmm. Feel that. Smooth as. Yeah. Is this a surgical rock they might use? So apart from Mukarite looking really cool and awesome, I don't really think it's used for anything. And what I've done is I've put a link down below if you want to know more about Mukarite. But what I do know is these rocks were formed from microorganisms 500 million years ago. So basically, the microorganisms came from the ancient oceans and were deposited, and then after a while, they've just been compacted into these rocks. But if you want more details, links down below.
yet again, another camp set up in the dark. But I reckon we've done it so many times that we could do it blindfolded. Morning, day two. I'm up here, get a bit of a view. Got the sun rising over there. And you can just see the sun bathing the horizon beyond that camp. And our camp's just down there amongst the trees. Pretty cool places. We're just surrounded by gorgeous. And the aim today is to head further up the Kennedy and there's a camp spot at the very top end of it. That's where we're going to get to today. And uh, I expect to get to camp at a decent time today. I can run you through one of the boys' setups. So this is Perth here. And this map doesn't even cover the whole state. And we are all the way up here. This is Carnarvon. And this is the Kennedy Range, and we are roughly here. Kennedy Range lays within the Gascoyne region, and this entire region used to be an ancient seabed some 250 million years ago. The Kennedy Range itself was actually formed by the ground pushing it up, and in length, running from a north to southerly direction, it is just under 200 kilometres in length. climb now and have a bit of a looky. No, it didn't look that big until you look up from here at here, Wayne. Okay. The hill didn't look that big until you're on it and look up at someone climbing it. Going down. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're at this cave. Cave 
carcasses around. So that's all mentioned, could be a dog's den. After having a bit of a look and enjoying the spectacular views from the top of the rock, it was then time to hit the tracks again. We then checked out an old homestead on Binfalia Station. This station managed about 9,000 sheep back in its day, 1914 I believe it was. There's not much left of it now. These days however, the land is now managed by the Department of Environment and Conservation. This track we're on at the moment is pretty slow going. So to get to our intended campsite, I don't think it'll be early afternoon. A little bit later. Our average speeds have been probably 20k per hour with the uh, occasional burst of 40 kilometers per hour. So I've now given up and gone into low range and been sitting in uh, fourth gear most of the time. It was then time for a quick lunch stop and this particular spot here was the first time we all felt quite remote on this trip. Cooking up a bit of lunch. What's cooking there? We've got uh, porterhouse steak, sausages and pasta in a tomato sauce. Yep. Quick and easy. Pre-made from home and just warm it up. The further north we travelled along the Kennedy, the more rocky the track seemed to get and low range gearing was required a lot more frequently than the high range gearing. There was also a lot of dry riverbeds and creek crossings that needed to be tackled and wheel placement you did have to think about it but it wasn't too challenging, however the drive was really enjoyable. Geckos. <laughs> How cool, hey? <laughs> Bloody hot. <laughs> oh, is that when you were here last time? Yeah, 16th of the 4th. So only... Jeez, not many people come up here, eh? So that's your group, this whole group? Yeah. So only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other vehicles have been here since. 
that really goes to show that not many people actually tackle the western side of the Kennedy Range. Most people just look at the east side, which is where the popular honeycomb gorge and stuff like that is, where you can get to by two-wheel drive. So the western side, you need to be self-sufficient and you need a four-wheel drive. So I guess that's why not that many people go to the western side. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one and thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to help support the creation of this content, you can go to patreon.com slash Please do subscribe if you haven't already. And yet again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Oh, and uh, stay tuned for the teaser for part two.